Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. In today's video, we meet Corrine, who retired into a tiny house village with a custom-built tiny home that accommodates her disability. Ordinary stairs can be a challenge for me. These stairs have a somewhat shorter rise and a somewhat longer run. And so it's a very natural walk. If you want to design a tiny house, don't listen to anybody tell you that a tiny house should have this or a tiny house should have that. Make it personal and you'll never want to live anywhere else. Before we take a tour and learn more about Corrine's story, please make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Corrine Corley, and this is my tiny house, Angel's Haven. Prior to going tiny, I lived in a traditional 100-year-old airplane bungalow in Brookside, which is an old neighborhood in Kansas City, Missouri. I wanted to make a big change in my life. I felt compelled to downsize. I also wanted to do something really radical. And there's nothing more radical than closing your law practice, selling your house, building a tiny house, and moving 2,500 miles. So that's what I did. <laughs> I saw a tiny house on the side of the road. And I said, that's exactly what I want someone to build for me. So I got off the highway where I saw this tiny house. And it was a bakery right in the middle of rural Missouri. And it turns out the woman's husband had built this tiny house. I sat down, I had a pastry and a cup of coffee, and I hired a husband to build my house. <laughs> I had this house built in Missouri, which is the lumber capital of the United States. It was built in 2017. The trailer cost 5,000. All in delivered to this spot, I spent 37,500. You couldn't do that today. We are currently in Park Delta Bay, which is an RV park and tiny house community in the California Delta. Well, I've been in Park Delta Bay since December 2017. Presently, there are 13 owner-occupied tiny houses in Park Delta Bay. The current lot fee is 800. That includes sewer, water, and we pay our own electricity. The size of my tiny house is 24 feet long. It's 13 and a half feet high. It is eight and a half feet wide, which is the limit if you don't want to have to get an extra wide permit when you go on the roadway. The base square footage is 270 if you count the lots. The name of my house is Angel's Haven. I've always had an affinity with angels. This mural was painted by an artist named Alex Lesh. This mural depicts the thematic focus of a Grateful Dead song called Broke Down Palace. It's a little faded now because it was painted two years ago, but it is an angel sitting by a river under a willow tree, which is part of the lyric of Broke Down Palace. My little brother, Stephen, committed suicide in 1997 and Broke Down Palace was the primary song that we played at his memorial service. It's evocative of the peace that we hope that he had uh, after he died. I actually designed this cupboard. The carpenter who built it was not really in favor of this cupboard, but I said it has to have a cupboard, and you'll see why. So my goal eventually is to go off grid. I wanted to have the electrical panel accessible. And if you can see behind my ladder, that's where the electrical panel is. 
In the middle section would be solar panels folded and put in there for travel. And then in this section, I would have a freshwater holding tank. And so it's actually functional and now beautiful because of the mural. So this is the back of Angel's Haven. Every lot has a power and water hookup. This is park water. The park is on a closed system. So in other words, we have our own water purifying station on the other side of the park. I believe I'm 30 amp, but the pole can be 50 or 30. I don't have to have 50 because I don't have air conditioning. I do lease my propane because of my disability. I don't want to have to be dealing with propane tanks. And so that's back here. But the real beauty of the back of my house is this gorgeous meadow. You see the willow trees. It's very open. People walk through. We have picnics or parties sometimes. And the bridge to my neighbors across the creek. The road on this side of the park is a quarter mile. So if someone is into walking and exercise, they can walk the, the road and see the beauty of this meadow. We have hawks and owls and coyotes. It really personifies the beauty of the California Delta. Now, when I moved here, there were rules about how big your added porch could be. And so the first porch on my house is the small one, which was the depth that was permitted when I moved here. And then they relaxed the rules a little bit. So I had the little eight by eight built. We all have gardens here. One of the things that the park provides is hook up so you can water your plants from the irrigation system rather than having to water them from the treated water. And so as you can see, my succulents are thriving. One of the things I did was put in a new on-demand hot water heater and you can see that it's installed to the outside. It's a precision temp and I've had it now for about two years amazingly effective. And of course, I can't forget, I really wanted to have a cedar house. So this was milled and installed green. It takes about a year to cure. And so my instructions were to weatherproof it after about a year, so I did. And that's why you see all the natural uh, variation in the wood, because I let it uh, season before I put a sealant on it to get that true Missouri look. So now that you've seen the outside of Angel's Haven, come on in and see the inside. This house was custom built to my specifications by a carpenter in Missouri. As you can see, it's laid out a little differently than many people envision a tiny house. The kitchen counter is about six feet long, and I had to have room for this beautiful secretary, which belonged to my mother-in-law. I actually had an argument with the carpenter. He kept saying, you're losing two feet of counter. And I kept saying, but look at this beautiful piece. Everything in this house is exactly the way I would have it if I still lived in a traditional house. Many of the things that are in this house came from my traditional house. The pieces that you see and the secretary, the dishes, my desk is here. Everything speaks of the way that I live. It wouldn't be good for everybody, but it's perfect for me. The house that I had in Missouri was a 100-year-old bungalow. Parts of that house were paneled in very old, knotty pine. And you can see, for example, the cabinet is built from leftover pieces of the very knotty pine that were in the basement of my traditional home in Missouri. We preserved them and used them for the cabinet in the bathroom and the edging on my kitchen cabinet. When I first had this house built, there was an RV stove here. 
and it had great burners, but I didn't like the oven part of it. I never used it. And it's taking up three cubic feet of floor space. So recently I had it taken out. When the RV stove was here, the cabinet that was here could not be used because the stove was in front of it. So now I have an entire cabinet that I never had before and it fits everything that used to just be crammed everywhere it fits in here. I loved the burners of the stove so I've replicated that with the burners that we dropped into the counter. In my traditional house, I had an upstairs bathroom that I had remodeled and it had a tiled shower. And I wanted the same tiles in this shower. And as a consequence, I have a beautiful tiled shower. And it is 42 inches deep. The reason I have a composting toilet is I do have aspirations to go off grid. I picked the Nature's Head toilet and uh, I have a fair amount of regret about that. This receptacle for the urine bottle, I don't have it diverted to the gray water line so I have to actually empty it into the gray water line. And the other problem with it is that how you turn it to compost. You can't really do it with your foot. Otherwise it's great. This backsplash, these are tiles that were in various places in my childhood home. That's how I got this backsplash. And that's the really important thing about if you want to design a tiny house, make it personal. Don't listen to anybody tell you that a tiny house should have this or a tiny house should have that. Make it personal and you'll never want to live anywhere else. Everybody has to have a refrigerator this space is actually designed to take a taller refrigerator. I can't have a wider or deeper refrigerator. I would like one. In my traditional house, this is in the basement. Washes and dries great. So this was also custom designed to serve me. Obviously, I was never probably going to sleep in that loft but it's designed so that it cants into the room. This grade of cant, I, I actually could climb this. This is a drop-down table, and originally I used this for my eating table, and it's made from a Live Edge cherry. I didn't have anywhere to put my desk, and I really like this desk. Um, for this reason, it opens up and it opens on both sides. So theoretically, I could sit six at it. So it's, it's an, a good option for a tiny house. That bench, which folds down, is also made from a piece of the paneling from my traditional house. In Angel's Haven, I have, as you can see, 21 inches of hanging space and a three-drawer dresser. And then next to this structure, there's a three-drawer wicker dresser. That's the entirety of my wardrobe. So I scaled down from 16 feet of hanging clothes to 21 inches. That's tiny living at its finest. These stairs were custom designed for me because I have a disability, ordinary stairs can be a challenge for me. These stairs have a somewhat shorter rise and a somewhat longer run. And so it's a very natural walk. And then they put this platform there so that I could steady myself before I took the last step. Now it's my little cozy bedroom, <laughs> which I really like. Because of the way the house is canted, it's higher on this side than that side, obviously. It's uh, five feet on this side and four feet on that side. This room is sort of an encapsule of my life. This bookcase was made by my great-grandfather for my oldest sisters, but I have all the pictures that were on my mantle in my traditional house are on the bookshelf in my tiny bedroom. This was my son's first musical instrument. Um, it's a German instrument. 
Now he plays banjo and guitar, so he moved on. But it's quiet up here. I have an east-facing window so I can see the sunrise. Uh, and it's really very peaceful. And I appreciate the fact that I have a separate space. So this is the sitting room. People who are tall or, you know, they say, oh, it's soap, but once you get in, you're fine. It's perfect <laughs> for me, I mean. But I, I have people in here that are not height impaired. And this is sort of a mixture of old and new. I have an Amish table, I have an antique table. To me, it's comfortable. Some people would say it was claustrophobic, but I like it. I had never lived in a community before. The people that live in Park Delta Bay are pretty special people, and I certainly did not expect that. What do I enjoy most about living tiny? It's really literally like living in a nest, and I think that's what I like best about it, the fact that it's comforting. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure that you subscribe and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.